Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. As you may recall, I recently tested some sabotaged 44 Magnum loads uh, using a 38 caliber 125 grain bullet. And they kind of worked, but they didn't really provide any unique capabilities. Uh, they weren't accurate enough for the flatter trajectory to really matter, and they weren't all that much higher velocity than standard 44 Magnum loads. Uh, now, after filming that video, I did experiment a little bit more with the Sabot design to see if I can improve it, and it didn't really go anywhere. I made some minor improvements, but nothing that would uh, provide the kind of quantum leap forward in functionality that would be necessary to uh, provide some kind of unique capability in those loads. And so, in regards to sabotaged 44 Magnum loads, I decided to go back to the drawing board and start over with a completely different bullet. So this is a sabotaged 55 grain 22 caliber bullet loaded into a 44 Magnum cartridge. So, let's go ahead and try these out, both in my revolver and my lever carbine, and see what they do. Okay, so admittedly this is a mixture of two groups, one from the rifle and one from the handgun, but I don't think that really affects our result, namely that practically all of the bullets are keyholing, and we have about a 25 inch spread at 25 yards, or about a hundred minutes of angle, which uh, I think anyone would be pretty hard-pressed to consider that acceptable accuracy. So, uh, our performance isn't looking good here. Now, uh, these are clearly 22 caliber bullets that are keyholing, so the Sabots are discarding. Uh, I see some pieces of Sabots uh, at the base of the target here. Uh, it's hard to tell whether the sabot is breaking up in the barrel and that that's contributing to the instability of the bullet or whether it's discarding as it should and breaking up after it gets out of the barrel. Uh, either way, it stands to reason that the rifling twist rate in a 44 Magnum is just not going to be fast enough to stabilize a 22 caliber 55 grain bullet. Well, I guess these rounds aren't a total failure, because uh, they do go off when I pull the trigger. Uh, they do even seem to cycle pretty well in the lever action, but the bullets don't stabilize and the accuracy is terrible. So, probably not a practical sabotaged round. Uh, in fact, they're so inaccurate that I'm afraid to shoot them across a chronograph for, for fear of hitting the chronograph. Um, that said, I think I will still set up a uh, gallon jug of water and try to shoot that with a sabotaged round and see if we can get some idea of the velocity just by comparing the amount of damage done to the jug uh, against what we would expect from something like a 223. Uh, incidentally, I'd say the recoil of these rounds is roughly comparable to a 223, maybe just a little bit less. Uh, certainly very light recoil compared to a normal 44 Magnum load. Uh, but anyway, let's set up our jug next and see what they do to that.
So if we take a look at these two jugs, the damage is pretty comparable to what I would expect from a 22 rimfire. Uh, the one from the rifle took a little bit more damage, as we would expect that the bullets are reaching higher velocity out of a longer barrel. Uh, but again, in both cases, the damage is not much more than we'd expect from a 22 rimfire. And so I'm thinking that our bullet velocity is much closer to that of a 22 rimfire than it is to that of a 223. Even though the volume of the report and the recoil are more reminiscent of a 223. Uh, and in any case, the damage to these jugs is much less than if we just shot them with a regular 44 Magnum round out of either of these guns. So once again, the performance of these sabotaged 44 Magnum loads is frankly disappointing. But that's the way research and development goes. Uh, if you've never had an idea that didn't work, then chances are you've never actually had an innovative idea. Uh, now, in principle, we might be able to continue working on these and eventually develop a sabotaged 44 Magnum load that actually works. Uh, but in practice, I think it's probably time for me to turn my attention to other projects. So, uh, in any case, hope you found this experiment entertaining. And until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.